Greetings friends, it's me Joan Ross and I'm here with another fun-filled science activity for you. Today we're talking about natural processes. And in the state of South Carolina we really begin getting into natural processes in the third and fifth grade. And one of the things that we'd like to talk about is whether or not those natural processes are constructive, destructive, or both. And one of those natural processes that we'd like to talk about would be weathering. And there are, in fact, two different types of weathering. We've got physical weathering and we've got chemical weathering. And the intent of this activity is to really highlight chemical weathering. Get your kids to understand what it is because chemical weathering can be a somewhat abstract concept. So what I'd like to do is share with my students this railroad spike. And I'll get them to talk about it with their teammates for about 20 or 30 seconds. They'll come back to me and we'll hit on some of those things that they shared. And of course they'll say, oh, some of them might say it's a railroad spike. Some of them might make a connection. Oh, that reminds me of the Transcontinental Railroad. And we rejoice internally. Good job, little Johnny. And we also will likely get, of course, someone tapping into his or her schema and saying, it's rusty. Well, yeah, it's rusty. They probably had their bicycle chain get rusted. Uh, I'm sure countless other things that they've come across have been rusty. But what we want our children to understand that rust is an example of chemical weathering. Well, I want my children, I ask them, well, what caused that, that railroad spike to get rusty? And hopefully they'll say, well, it got wet. That's true. That is very true. It did get wet. But it was not the water by itself that did it. It was also the oxygen. And when that water and that oxygen react with certain types of rocks, as well as man-made objects, then we have oxidation that occurs. And so, that's fine and that's dandy, but we want our children to not only hear, see, and discuss, but we want them to do. Hopefully, better ensuring that they will more deeply internalize just what chemical weathering is. So, let me share with you what we have right here. All right, so let's take a look, shall we? Right here we have uh, one bowl with an iron nail, and what I did, we'll call this trial one, what I did was I put my nail and I just came over with a spray bottle and I sprayed some water on a daily basis. And I wanted this controlled setting to represent that odd or stray nail that gets lost in your yard and then the morning dew interacts with it on a daily basis. And we can see that it has begun to rust and this nail has been sitting up in here and getting sprayed on a daily basis for about a week. If we look over here at our second bowl, and we'll call this one trial two, it has rusted over much more severely than the nail in trial one. And why is that? Well, because it is very much so deeply submerged within that water. And so we can see that the water and the oxygen is reacting with those nails, causing them to change. But the really cool thing about doing this activity in this controlled setting is you can actually see the particles from the nail that are spread out throughout those bowls. So your kids can actually see how the nails have begun to break apart. And so these small particles that we have floating within the individual bowls indicate or show that those nails are actually breaking apart. And if it breaks apart, it is therefore destructive. So again, this activity really should help your students to more deeply internalize the difference between chemical and physical weathering as well as whether or not chemical weathering is constructive, destructive, or both. Thank you so much, friends, for tuning in. I look forward to seeing you next time. Have a good one.